It's time for another edition of Lewis at Large, 60 minutes of smart talk radio featuring guests from all walks of life in conversation with your host, Warner Lewis. So sit back and lend us your ears for the next hour. Now here with today's first guest is the host of Lewis at Large, Warner Lewis. Well, welcome everybody to another edition of Lewis at Large. Yours truly Warner Lewis from the Flight Deck and uh, Smart Talk Radio uh, is indeed my friends in your future. Uh, we got a good one this segment. We're going to be talking to uh, a member of the United States military, Sergeant Stephanie J. Shannon. She has an extraordinary story uh, and a new workout called Battling the Storm Within. Uh, she has been many things. Uh, she has been injured. Uh, she suffers from PTSD, uh, has earned medals and served her country uh, in a very, very brave and tremendous way. It's a very, very fascinating story. And before I go too much farther, I don't want to mess this one up. Uh, Stephanie, how are you, my friend? Great. Hey, by the way, may I call you Stephanie, or would you prefer Sergeant yes. Shannon? Okay. <laughs> That's fine. All right. Well, let's do this. Let's get a, a nice setup for you here. Again, you served in the in the Army as a sergeant, as a non-commissioned officer for eight years, uh, and also in Desert Storm uh, and several other things. Give us a little bit uh, of background, uh, if you would, uh, about Stephanie Shannon and what led you to the military. Oh, well, um I was, uh, I would say this, uh, adventurous, and I saw the military as an opportunity to earn money for college and to be all I could be. So um, the recruiters basically sold it to me, and I took the ticket, and I was looking for an opportunity to really explore the world and serve in my country. I was really excited about it. And um, what happened was, um, after I earned my associate's degree in fashion merchandising, I ended up in the military, and five months later, after basic and AIT, I was shipped over to Desert Storm. So it was a, a quite, uh, I would say, shocking experience. I didn't think I could actually be a part of the military. Um, well, actually serve in a, in a war. I really kind of blocked that out. You know, you wish the worst possible scenario, and, and I got it. Um, so shortly after I was over in Desert Storm, I began to experience what we call military sexual trauma. Uh, military sexual trauma is uh, unwanted, unsolicited attention, um, uh, sexual assault, possibly rape. Um, it's basically what it does is that, um, they didn't, at the time that I was in, they didn't have rules and clear rules and regulations and systems of reporting military sexual trauma. So I kind of just put up with it for a while. Um, and so while I was serving in the Gulf War, driving 14 ton tractor trailers, um, I was experiencing a lot of, uh, unwanted solicited sexual advances and, just kind of endured it for a while, and, and I didn't have any other support through that process. It was two other friends that um, experienced rape over there, and there was no justice or system in reporting it also. Um, so some things happened over there to me that I never dealt with. Um, a lot of times soldiers go over to, you know, shift over to war, and the military system is totally different from the civilian system. You know, if you're sexually assaulted or raped or something like that, you go straight to the police, you get your attorney, you know, it's a whole other system. But the military system, you have to go through the chain of command. And if your leaders, which was, in my case, were the problem, you know, what do you do? Go to the person that's the offender and, and report them. So um, that was the problem, and there's still a problem today. Um, this statistic state that one in three women are raped in the military, 38 men are sexually assaulted every day in the military. Um, they just recently did a survey of where 26,000 troops reported unwanted sexual uh, attention and um, uh, advances and things of that nature, and only 20% reported. So, you know, it's, it's a big problem in the military. The ones that didn't report it, most of us, we say, our concern is the chain of command. Our commander is like the main person that decides if they're going to prosecute and investigate the case. And most of the time what happens is that um, a lot of things are not fairly done, and most soldiers do not report because of the fear of retaliation, your career being ruined, you know, you're being discharged with a quote-unquote diagnosis of what they call a personality disorder, which will cause you to not be able to receive any VA benefits when they put you out. So you kind of walk in that thin line of do I report? What happens if I do report? and the retaliation factor. So, and that was my case too. 
and there's still an issue today. Yeah, I would. Uh, do you have any? Again, you said you felt very much alone. That's certainly understandable. Did you? Were you able to talk to other women, or, or frankly, men for that matter, that that had the same experience? Uh, maybe not necessarily in the in the area where you were, but in other parts of the military. No, not at the time. Um, I had a girlfriend. She saw it. She knew, and she tried to help me transfer to another squad, and they wouldn't allow it. So we kind of just, you know, wasn't really much a support base there. You know, who do you tell besides your peers? And, you know, your leaders basically make the decisions. And when I spoke up for myself, I used to get put on extra duty, you know, threatened with Article 15, things like that. I was just, you know, put out, um, put away. And when I did have problems, they would kind of um, even ostracize me and cause me to suffer even more emotionally. So it was a very uh, difficult time in my life. Um, but I endured it. I, I was just determined to make it back home alive. But when I got home, um, I asked for um, help, you know, mental health services, but I never received it. Um, so I kind of just chucked it up as, okay, I'm alive. I got my arms, legs, and I'm okay. But I didn't realize that... Um, that type of trauma, along with, you know, the scub missile attacks, along with being, you know, the, the panic attacks, the fear, you know, of death every day, you know, you have those other factors in place, too. Um, so when I got home, I just, you know, I sought some private psychiatrist help for a short period of time, so I just dove into my career. I just went to school to get uh, study psychology, and I worked as a social worker for 15 years, so I just didn't take care of myself. Sometimes what happens is when we do experience trauma um, experiences, sometimes it's minimized and we kind of think, well, we're still alive. And some people tell me that, you know, well, so long ago, uh, you know, just you're safe now. But I didn't process my trauma for over 20 years. And I feel that it's important that anyone experience any type of trauma, that they get help right away. Because the longer you delay, it may, you know, come into a condition like this post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, that's what happened to me. I ended up burning out. And my psychiatrist took me off work, and that's when it was, it's been about three, four years now that I've been in therapy and processing my trauma. Now, that's where the book came from, was therapy, actually. You know, I was journaling and just writing what I really was feeling, and there was so much healing in it, and it just happened to evolve into a book, and I felt like it was important that I shared it with others, what I went through, and I'm meeting so many people that are in those dark places. Um, I was suicidal. I was depressed. Um, you know, I was in a dark place in life. And um, a lot of people now that I'm meeting, since I've been networking and stepping out, they're sharing with me their traumas. Um, just like me, years of lack of, you know, intervention and treatment and whatnot, all kinds of things of that nature. So um, it's really a good thing that's happening, um, me being transparent and sharing my story because I'm trying to empower others to speak up and tell their truth and deal with those, what I call invisible wounds, the psychological wounds that you're not able to see. Well, you just joined us. Yours truly, Warner Lewis from the Flight Deck of Lewis at Large Radio. Uh, we're right in the midst of some smart talk radio uh, with an extraordinary story indeed. We're talking to Sergeant Stephanie J. Shannon. Uh, the work is called Battling the Storm Within, uh, a story of... Uh, uh, quite frankly, a little bit of desperation there, uh, one of loneliness, one of abuse, uh, and uh, again, uh, from someone uh, that served her country uh, for many years uh, as in the United States Army as a sergeant, a non-commissioned officer, uh, and also in uh, Desert Storm as well. Uh, Stephanie, when, when you look back on this, um, you know who your the perpetrators were, Um has there been anything recently that you've tried to do, or is at this point, have you sort of, so to speak, put that behind you and now you're moving on? Tell us about that. Yeah, I talk about that in my book, is that sometimes, you know, the level of justice is forgiveness. I, um, the point was, I kind of, at the time, was thinking, well, they're stressed out too, and then maybe this is the way they're dealing with it. So I, I threw a lot of them on my shoulder. But, um, I, that's why I didn't file when I first got out. You know, my girlfriend, she went and filed a can't claim. And um, I just said, I just don't want to talk to them anymore. I don't want to go through all this court stuff and, you know, trying to prosecute people. I just wanted to stop. So throughout my, um, I would say, process of uh, my journey, um, I came to a place of forgiveness. Um, I, I forgave them. You know, I never seen them again, but I just released them. And that's when a lot of my healing began is when I started um, 
forgiving all my offenders, all the ones that felt that violated me and disrespected me and didn't protect me like they're supposed to. It took a while, but I can say this now, I don't hold any anger or resentment in my heart towards them. Um, then that's when I was able to, I can say, like, kind of break out of this emotional prison. Because at first I was so angry, I felt like you did me wrong. You owe, you know, you, you know, just kind of demanding this level of justice I knew I was going to never get. Because, um, <laughs> you know, ridiculous request at the time, because um, for sure they wanted to believe me anyway, you know, and I didn't have support anyway. So I really was up against, my back against the wall. So I think a lot of times when we talk about survivors, Sometimes the people that offend us or abuse us, or you know, and you go through a trauma, they're no longer here. You no longer have a relationship with them. So, in order for me to set myself free, I decided to forgive them, to release them. Well, I'm curious as to officially, uh, the military response to your concerns and complaints in boiled down to basically what? Um, basically, it was my word against theirs. Um, the question is, well, why did you tell? Why did you report it? That's just like someone that, you know, is just, you know, I was a kid, 20 years old. I was scared. You know, um, I had so much going on in me. I was just wanting to live and make it every day. So um, what happened, too, I heard recently there was a foul, lawsuit against the um, um, DOD, and it was a several women that were that experienced military sexual trauma, and they filed a lawsuit. And they basically, the response to it was that, uh, military sexual trauma is an occupational hazard and that you basically, you know, put yourself in that position. And I said, well, I feel that if they are considered an occupational hazard, they need to let people know up front that if you join the military, you may possibly get raped or sexually assaulted. You know, the stats is that 10% of men that join the military increases their, you know, their chance by 10% to be raped. So those things need to be stated up front. Um, so that's basically what the show, um, your response was. And, and then also filing for my VA claim, I went through literally jail trying to, you know, <laughs> file my claim. You know, I was denied over and over and I was just sitting there frustrated. And, and I, um, I finally got to a point where I met some ladies that were strong advocates and they taught me how to work through the pro- process of sacred work. Cause every time I talked about it, I was really reliving the trauma. So basically, it's kind of to a point where a lot of victims feel like you get shifted, you know, the stick, and you just got to deal with it. And um, that's what I feel a lot of victims still feel that way, that the military doesn't help them process their pain and when they are traumatized. Um, Military really pretty, you know, as you can see, just on the outside, (laughs) it's not really an emotional, cuddling place. You know, it's like you pick yourself up, you know, be a soldier, keep pushing on, and that's what they put in, ingrained in you. So that's what you keep doing. So when people injure themselves, even physically, you hear a lot of soldiers, they just keep going and going because it's kind of what they inbred in you. So that's what happened, and that's what I see what's happening now is this, the guilt that a lot of victims have is that when it does happen to them, you know, what part did I cause? And they kind of put the blame on you, but after therapy and looking at it objectively, you find out that's not the necessary the truth. Of the you served the country in the United States Army. Uh, you were excited when you went in. Um, you, I doubt if you felt like you were sold a bill of goods. What happened, I, I suppose, could happen to anybody at some level. I, I'm curious as to now, though, uh, because I, I know you love the country, and, and I think your uh, overall would be have very good things to say about the military. But has it changed you in terms of your vigor or enthusiasm to encourage others to either enlist or serve their country? It definitely has. Um, I deal, I'm a veterans advocate, and I deal with veterans. Even they're not MST, they could have had, a, you know, an open wound or, you know, sometimes some trauma happening. And i am be honest with you, I do not promote the military. Um, I tell anyone, especially young kids now, um, they're not the same kind of kids that we were when we were going, when I was coming up. I'm 45. And I come from old school, you know, that real strict family background. You know, you work hard for what you want. And a lot of these, you know, youth nowadays don't really have that kind of character. And so I tell them, I say, look, if you want to join the military, remember this. You're going to be told what to do, how to do it, what to wear, where to go. And if you can't handle that, you know, you don't need to go. So I tell them soberly that you have to know that you're called to go into the military, that this is your destiny, and that you're willing to go through anything, and that the risk, you know, the psychological risk, the physical risk, or even losing your life, you know, every veteran, I would say, or every soldier, 
knows that they could possibly shift over to war, deploy, and could lose their life. Um, so um, I personally don't. I tell them the sober truth of my experience and several other veterans. And I also tell them, I said, go to the VA hospital and just talk to some of the Vietnam vets, you know, in different areas. I said, don't just take my word. And I said, and just objectively listen, just saying that you know that you're putting yourself at a higher level of risk. So do I promote it? No, I, I don't encourage it. Um, I just think that I, I try to encourage them to take other career paths and let the military be your last you know, option, or possibly if you're drafted, that's a whole other thing, but to voluntarily go into the institution that has so many problems, as we can see in the media today, you know, so much coming out, um, I I think that is just not wise to do. So, Stephanie, uh, uh, prognosticate for us a little bit. Uh, look down the road. What uh, what does the future hold for you? Well, actually, I'm really excited um, after all this that I've been through. Um, like I said, the last few years, really working on myself, sorting out what happened. I've become a very strong advocate. Um, I have a very strong presence in the community and nationwide where I'm, you know, I'm getting type of publicity to be a voice for those that are no longer here, you know, like to share this, the veterans suicide rate is 22 veterans a day. And I can relate. I was suicidal. So I'm raising awareness to the major issues that veterans face. So I look at my life as an example of how to overcome trauma and live again. And I really am enjoying my life now. Before, I was just kind of like, oh, you know, why am I still here? But now I feel like I have to, you know, I have a charge and a duty to um, advocate for my brothers and sisters in arms. And I feel, you know, like it's, okay, now I'm at a place of standing. Now I'm going to help you stand. So I'm really enjoying what's happening now. Um, it's like a shift that's happening. And it's like the purpose while my pain is starting to manifest. So I'm walking it out. Well, I'm curious as to do you again uh, abuse at, at any level? Obviously, is nothing that anybody would ever want to encourage, and you'd certainly like to wipe it out. Do you feel that uh, men and women in the military, and we'll and we'll leave it just to that. And this, by the way, the show is not to, meant to be an indictment of the military at all. This could be yeah. in a lot of different institutions. But uh, is the, is the abuse, so to speak, passed around? It may be different. But uh, or is it primarily aimed at women? Do you think in the military? I think it's passed around. Um, like I said, I was just out at a recent event, and um, I was doing a networking event, and it was a veterans expo. And I met two other women that were that had MST experiences, and, and and just me sharing my story was in tears. And I met a um, a young man that was a military sexual trauma victim. So I really think it's across the board different factors. You know, we have a lot of issues of toxic leadership in the military where um, those issues need to be, some things need to be cleaned out of that system. So I think across the board, some of my brothers in arms, I, I, I see them a lot in the community, and they share a lot of the same type of um, feelings and emotions about their time. You know, some people, they say, oh, I had a great career, and I think that's awesome, but a lot of people didn't. And the ones I know that will say they had struggle and trauma and, and difficult times have the same type of posture that I have, where they're not too quick to advocate for the military and, and talk really soberly because the after effect is when you become a veteran. You know, when you're out here and you need medical attention, you need housing. You know, I was homeless. I, you know, I, I was making 50000 a year and I burned out and I lost everything. So, you know, that that's ridiculous. And it shouldn't have occurred, but um, it happened. So I think the reality is that most of us, and I can't speak for all, but me personally, you know, um, I feel that a lot of have been a lot of psychological, emotional wounds that take a long time to heal. And the point is that, you know, people have to be open to wanting to be healed. And a lot of times the pride, you know, the strength you have, you know, being this courageous soldier, this superhero kind of thing, it's kind of hard to ask for help. You know, you have to be to a place of humbleness or like when I did, I burned out and I didn't have any other choice but to turn to the VA again and say, hey, I need help. So... Well, the story, uh, sadly, is not completely unique, but it is still uh, a poignant one indeed. The work is called Battling the Storm Within by Sergeant Stephanie J. Shannon of the United States Military. Uh, there is also a website, battlingthestormwithin.com. Stephanie, uh, how can people find out more uh, and get a copy of the book as well? 
Well, um, they can go to my website, thatonlystormwithin.com, and also I'm on Amazon. I hit number one bestseller at Amazon. Um, I have a, a ebook and I have a paperback, and I'm working on an audio. Um, also, I'm on YouTube. So I just it's not just about my book. If you want me, if you need me to help you find services, if you're a um, family member and you see their veteran struggling, struggling or need some type of uh, support, please reach out to me because I'm connected nationwide to about 60 other veteran advocates and we can help you. So um, I'm there for you just for that. If you just want to share your story, yeah, uh, I appreciate it. Yeah, we very much appreciate uh, you sharing a very personal story, obviously, and uh Hopefully this will be open some eyes and be enlightening for others. And uh, best of luck to you as uh, you head on down the road. And thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. You bet. We'll be back with more right after this on Lewis at Large.